Hi, I'm Corey Metcalf. I spent some time working with Little Bits today with Darwin Gross, and our goal was to create a very specific project with Little Bits um, in conjunction with Max MSP. And basically, what we were trying to do is emulate a theremin using some simple uh, camera tracking to detect different colors, which would allow us to change filtering and pitch output from a Little Bits setup, which we can give you another view of in a minute here. So I'm just going to give you kind of a quick walkthrough of the basic way that this system works. Um, essentially what it's doing is it's using the built-in camera for uh, any laptop computer. You could also hook up an external camera. And it allows us to detect a particular color. And we click on that color using an in-screen view of the camera here. It will look for that color. And when we drag across the horizontal axis, we're able to change pitch and the vertical axis controls the filter. And so the way we're doing this is we have two of the, uh, let's see, I believe it's the W27 USB audio IOs hooked up, and we're sending uh, signal data straight out of Max into the little bit setup. Now this offers some really fun possibilities. Um, right now I'm using a larger color object because it's really kind of easy to consistently track. I can move quickly across the screen space and make sure that I'm keeping track the entire time. Now, without kind of interfering in any other way, I'm always tracking the object, and so we're sort of in this constant Poisson mode. If I ever want to stabilize, I just have to keep myself very still. One of the other options, though, is that if I cover that object, I can move to a different location on screen, and when I reveal it, we'll shift over to whatever that new pitch is. If we try and use something a little bit smaller, it allows us to have some different possibilities for control. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this green object here, click on it, and now I've locked into the green. And in the interface, we actually have something called Wiggle Room that allows us to be a little more forgiving with the color. So it can be a little further from that color and still maintain that tracking. One of the fun things about using a smaller object like this is that if I move quickly, because of the way that the camera works, it'll lose track of the object. And so I can sort of jump to new pitches very quickly and simply. Looks like, like my wiggle room's off a little bit here, so I'm gonna adjust this and tighten it up so it'll track this a little bit better. Because we're doing color tracking, one of the things that you wanna be aware of is if you're wearing anything similar to the color of the object, in my case, I'm actually wearing green, and so I'm going to slide off camera here, and that'll allow me to have a little bit more direct control with this object. So the most uh, effective objects will be objects that are the furthest away from any other colors in the frame. And you'll want to try and have some somewhat controlled lighting so that it's even across the camera frame. One of the first objects we actually started out with today was the Little Bits battery because it has this very bright blue top. And so it actually makes a rather uh, good object to track. And so if you happen to have a Little Bits battery in your kit, you can go ahead and use one of those for this. And one of the things that I liked about it, you'll want to adjust the wiggle room so you can kind of get it tightened in on it so that the crosshairs stay pretty good on this battery. One of the things I liked about playing with this is that it's very easy to cover up the tracked part of it with one finger. And so you can kind of quickly move around the screen and you're sort of acting like a human gate. You just move your hand off of it and you're tracking a new location. So we encourage you to play around with the patch as it is, and then you'll notice that we've got a couple of different areas in here. Um, one where it says convert horizontal to MIDI note number. Right now it's set to MIDI note numbers 38 to 95, which is basically the entire range. If you decrease that and change those values, you can have a much more controlled range of pitches in here. 
And so just quickly, I'll go ahead and adjust this so that we're only working with an off loop. And so you can see that we have much tighter control over a certain range of pitches in here. There's also the latch and mute mode, and that's a simple toggle. And when you turn latching on, or actually when you turn muting on, it'll change the behavior so that instead of holding on to the last pitch, whenever your object disappears, it'll ramp back down to silence. The latching mode will cause it to hold on to whatever the last pitch and filter state was. So this is our theremin emulator using Max MSP and little bits with the W27 USB IO as the interface.